Hello everybody. Happy Tuesday. Hello, hello. And give everybody a minute to come join us for part three of the Dobby cardigan. Mm. And again, I have to go turn off my turn off my own video over here so I'm not trying to watch myself. There we go. Okay. And I figured out how to pop my chat out uh, and then make it bigger so I can actually peek over at my computer over here and be able to read it from that far away without having glasses on. So that's a plus. <laughs> okay. So I had planned on finishing the last two rows. This is where I'm at on my Dobby. Um, and I didn't, so I am going to go ahead and finish my last two rows while everyone is joining in. Uh, this is my second to last row that I'm finishing up right now. So I hope you guys are all having a great Tuesday, a great start to your week. Um, it's really gross outside today here, so that's no fun. Um, trying to think. I feel like there was something I wanted to... Oh, I got a new shipment of yarn from Hobie for a new summer challenge that they're doing, and I really wanted to try to photograph it. And I don't think that's going to happen today because there's just not a lot of good light. Uh, so, you know, I'm a natural light kind of gal. I love, um, I love getting to take my pictures outside and yeah. And I mean, part of it, you know, I've been taking photographs professionally on and off since 2012. So like weddings, engagements, portraits, that kind of thing. Uh, portraits are my favorite, which comes out in, if you guys follow me on Instagram, the pictures of myself, that is the portrait style that I do. I like to find colorful backdrops, which, you know, in my case, it's colorful clothing and, uh, you know, I usually use like nature for backdrops because that can be colorful with the greens and things. But, um, but in all the time that I have been doing photography, I never learned how to use, um, off camera flash. And that is the very best way to mimic, um, natural light. And so, um, yeah, never took a class, never did any of that. Maybe one day. It's on my wish list of things I would like to learn how to do. But it's one of those things where you really, the equipment that you have to use is very expensive. So, um, you know, you really kind of want to take a class first before you uh, purchase it. Okay, so Ellen is here. Sandra, oh, this works out really good. I made the chat huge on my computer so I can read it. Cinder is working and lurking. Emma says, hello, friends. Uh, hello, Nancy. I see you also working and listening. Uh, let's see. Jessica is here. It's beautiful is Connecticut, right? CT is Connecticut. It's beautiful in Connecticut. Um, I think the South right now is kind of getting some crappy weather, uh, I believe. I think the storm started in Texas, and it's moving this direction over towards um, Alabama and Georgia and Florida and all that fun stuff. But I'm glad it's beautiful where you are. We'll have some really pretty weather here soon though. And we've had some beautiful days. I mean, the last couple, like the last, the week before last, it felt like summer. Um, and I've got quite a few big outdoor projects that, that we're, um, planning on doing this year, including a garden, which we have not started because he kind of, Matt, my, my husband, um, reads all the almanacs and things, and he's got some very wise older gardeners in his life who said not to plant. Um, and then we just had, uh, the, in the last couple of days, we had another freeze. So um, I was glad we hadn't tried to start anything. And I hope the plants that grew on their own uh, will be okay. I think they're going to be okay. We'll see. Ellen says it's cloudy but warmer, and same here. So it's warmer outside than it has been over the last couple of days. 
Um, it's just gross. It's dreary. It's not raining cats and dogs, you know. I mean, it's just like a drizzle. Um, but sometimes that's the worst, especially if the drizzle just lasts all day, you know. <laughs> Who else is here? Terry is here. Hello, everyone. It's pretty darn nice here in North Carolina, but tomorrow is going to be yuck. Rain, rain, rain. Yeah, so we got it before you because I'm in Alabama. So it is headed your way, and I am not sending it, so you can't blame me. <laughs> okay, this should be my last row. And if you're just tuning in, this is part number three of the Dobby Cardigan. This is also just the normal time that I go live to chat with you guys and check in and see how you're doing and just be someone you can hang out with and crochet with if you would like. Um, a lot of people work and lurk. You know, they might be working on their lunch break and just listening in. Um, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm all that interesting, but I try to be. Uh, I don't feel like I always have a ton of stuff going on in my life to talk about, but uh, usually you guys have things that you can share and talk about um, and then I can just chime in. Um, but doing these live crochet long sessions is very helpful for me because it gives me something to focus on outside of just coming up with things to say during the live. Um, and this is where I'm at. So I am making the size small slash medium in the Dobby cardigan. I am working from the print friendly version. So most of my patterns are super colorful. This is the print friendly version. So it is black and white only. Um, you can get both patterns uh, from my Etsy listing. So when you purchase the Dobby cardigan, you get the option to download both of these. So you get the print friendly and the regular. Um, like I said, I'm doing the small slash medium size, which is the third size. Uh, my gauge is a little off for my initial gauge. Um, the pattern calls for two, size, two strands of size four weight yarn. I went with one strand of a size five. I am using a 10 millimeter hook. I probably should have sized down to a nine. Um, my cardigan will probably be the teeny bit oversized, uh, but that's okay. I didn't want to frog it after I'd already started. So I'm just going to roll with it and have a little more space in my cardigan. So I just finished the back panel, which I'm still on the first page of the cardigan of the pattern. And I should have 32 rows in my back panel. And I'm going to recount one more time since I've been a little spacey lately. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-
Uh, and then the 4x slash 5x should have 36 rows, and you'll be starting on row 37 to start your front first front panel. Okay, so I'm going to turn my work like I'm starting my next panel. Okay, so I was here, flipping it around. I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to work, and it tells me how many, how many half, because I'm going to keep doing half double crochet. Two, three... I'm going to work, if I can find where I'm at, 15 half double crochet stitches across. So instead of working all the way across like I have been, I'm going to work 15 and stop. Okay, if that makes sense. So I'm going to do 15, but the size is in order. If you are working extra, extra small, slash, slash extra small, you're going to work 12 half double crochet stitches. Extra small slash small is 13. Small medium is 15, which is what I'm doing. Medium large is 18. Large XL is 20. XL 2X is 21. 2X 3X is 24. 3X 4X is 26. 4X 5X is 28. And that is how many stitches you are about to work back across this last row. Okay. And I know that's a lot, it feels like a lot of info, but if someone is watching this replay or if you guys are following along and you do not purchase the pattern, I did not want you to have to purchase the pattern in order to be able to follow along. Uh, so I hope that is helpful. Okay, so I'm working my first row of my front panel, AKA row 33. And I'm going to do 15 half double crochets. And I am going to count these. So I'm, I know I'm a little quiet on this first one, but it's always the first one. If I can get the first row right, then I can be on autopilot again. All right. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. 15 uh, half double crochet stitches. So as you can see, you can see where I stopped. So I just worked back across the row as if I was starting on another back panel row, but I stopped at 15 stitches, okay? Once I stop, I'm going to then, from here, turn my work and chain one. And then I'm going to work half double crochet stitches all the way back across, which should be 15. And you're going to repeat this, repeat this uh, over and over again until your front panel is the same length as your back panel. And that's all you got to do for the front panel, guys. Super, super easy. Um, okay. Ellen says, come on, Evelyn, I need good weather down there, heading that way in a couple of days. I know, I told you, it's not my fault. I'm not sending the bad weather. It's not me. Blame the universe. <laughs> Do a rain dance. <laughs> Tracy said, sorry, I'm late. Have I missed anything? No, you haven't missed anything. Um, I mean, I'm going through the instructions. So uh, if you're waiting on, if you need the instructions for the Dobby, you may end up watching the replay if you if you don't have the instructions, uh, if you didn't purchase the pattern. Uh, but I am working on my front panel. So you can see my little, my little front panel starting to form. You can see that little bump, okay? Now, uh, the front panel length should be the same as the back panel length, which means for me, uh, I, my back panel was 32 rows long, which means my front panel also should be 32 rows long. So super simple. Um, I'll go over that one more time. Uh, so if you are following these instructions, depending on your size, the first three sizes should be 32 rows long on the back and front panel. That's extra, extra small, all the way to small medium. And then medium large and large XL should be 33 rows long for the back and front panels. Uh, large XL, let's see, medium large, large, XL slash 2X and 2X 3X should be 34 rows long for the front and for the back panel. 
And then 3x, 4x is 35, 4x, 5x is 36 rows for the back and the front panel. So they should be even. All right, and I just chain one in between each and I turn my work. So now we're back on autopilot because I can just go with it until I finish the front panel. Um, the next step after the front panel, the first front panel is gonna be the second front panel. And for that one, I do have to actually attach, uh, reattach a new strand of working yarn. So you will tie off at the end of your front panel and you'll reattach your yarn. If you followed the Luna cardigan, if you followed my crochet along or if you've just made the Luna cardigan in the past, um, it's the same construction for that part of the body um, and even for the sleeves. So it's very, very similar in construction, um, but it's, you know, the counts are completely different because the yarn is different. Uh, and this one has the hood and the sleeves, uh, the cuffs of the sleeve are different on this one. So I just feel like the, the way that these patterns are constructed gives the cardigans a really nice fit. And I've gotten a lot of great feedback on the fit of these cardigans when this type of construction is used. So I do use this a lot. This is one of my favorite ways to um, construct my cardigans. And it's minimal sewing, which is really nice. You know, there's a lot of people who are maybe a little intimidated by sewing or just don't enjoy it. Uh, so the only sewing that you have to do in these cardigans is for the sides of the cardigan to create the armhole. So I think that's pretty nice. Oh, I was going to tell you guys. So um, I have officially joined TikTok. So this is something I, I don't think I ever said I would never join TikTok. I try not to say never because I feel like you just never know. You never know. Um, but I have turned it down a lot. I've turned the idea down a lot. People who said I should join and check it out, you know. Um, and some of it too is just, it's just one more thing. You know, it's one more thing that you have to worry about and make videos for, and especially if you're running it for your business. You know, it'd be different if, if I enjoyed social media on more of a personal level. Um, but I, the only personal social media account I have that's not for Pink Sheep is uh, my Facebook account. I have, you know, I have a personal Facebook account, but that's it. I don't have a personal Instagram. I don't have a personal TikTok. I don't have personal Twitter. I don't have any of that. Um, and so when I open a new social media account, it's for Pink Sheep and that, you know, there's some pressure there of like, well, if I'm going to open it, it can't look bad. I can't have nothing on there, you know? Um, so that has kind of held me back from starting a TikTok because I really needed to get to a place where I felt like I had the time to commit to making videos and, and doing things. Um, make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, Emma said, oh, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Caitlin says, so excited to finally catch a live. Hello. Uh, I'm trying not to miss any comments either. Like I said, I blew the chat up really big. So I also have to make sure I look over there enough or I'll miss comments because I can't scroll from here. <laughs> Um, Emma says, I think I may have bitten off more than I can chew. I have started a crochet color work and knitted one. I have them both on the go, but I will persevere. You will persevere. You will, Emma. I believe in you. Um, I am kind of stuck. I'm working on the Dobby here, but I'm also working on my t-shirt cardigan, which is this big pile of cardigan over here. It's quite heavy because it's t-shirt yarn. Um, and I'm stuck because I, I feel like I might want to add a zipper <laughs> and I'm on the fence because zippers aren't exactly easy to add. Uh, but I feel like this cardigan is supposed to be super funky. And I think that a two way zipper, you know, that I can come this way or pull from the bottom could really, really make this cardigan special and, and be some, be like really, really cool. And you wouldn't have to add one, you know, you wouldn't have to add a zipper, but if I'm going to add a zipper, then I need to maybe do a video of how I add the zipper, um, which I'm not excited about because I don't really know how well, how easy it would be to sew a zipper 
into this material. So I'm, I, it's, I'll find myself just staring at it like, do you really need a zipper? <laughs> because I don't know if you really need one. And I'm waiting for it to tell me whether or not it really wants a zipper. So I'm stuck between those two projects, but really that's the only, those are really the only projects I have going on right now. Um, I finished my mini puff jacket, which is now in testing, which I'm so excited about. Uh, that's going to be a really fun one. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I posted it on Instagram, so you can check that out over there. Uh, but it is the little sister of the Powerpuff jacket that I just released, which is behind me on the chair, this big monstrosity back here. Um, so yeah, I finished that. Um, I do kind of want to do, well, I just got my yarn from Hobie. And the Hobie yarn, and I'm sorry, UPS is here, so you might hear the dogs barking in the background. Um, I really hope that they put our packages up on the porch because it's raining. If they don't, I might have to, let me see where they're going. Okay, good. They're going up on the front porch. I was a little concerned because if they don't go up on the front porch, I was going to have to take you guys with me and go get the package if they'd left it at the basement door because it's raining. But it only took one time. I put a um, I put a sign up for them not too long ago on our basement door, which is on the side of our house, uh, that was like, please leave these on the front porch. <laughs> because we had one instance where we had multiple deliveries on the same day. It was FedEx, UPS, and USPS. <laughs> oh, that's a scam likely call. Um, all the interruptions today. Um... And my, my father-in-law is about to come in the house and get himself some coffee. So I'm hoping he doesn't yell at me to try to get me to come say hi. I don't know if my husband told him that I'm on this live. So we'll see what happens. Um, if we get interrupted, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But at least I'm we're, we're at a point now where we're just kind of going. So, But yeah, I had multiple deliveries. This was we had just moved into the house. It wasn't even a month. And we were in Jasper, which is like... 30 to 45 minutes away and um we were like they'll be fine they're gonna leave them on the porch we've got a front porch why wouldn't they leave them on the front porch it's raining and it was like pouring down rain but we knew that even if we left jasper and went straight home that they were still gonna sit out in the rain if they were in the rain so we finished up our stuff and we went home and we just had a mountain of soggy completely soaked packages sitting down at the door at our basement um, so never again. Yeah. As soon as we left and it was raining that next time and I knew we were getting delivery, I put a big sign on the door that said, please leave all packages on the front porch. Thank you. And like a smiley face. And I tried to be really sweet about it. I didn't want anyone to think that I was like being bitchy, you know, of like put the packages on the front porch, you know? <laughs> um, but I was like, I can't, you know, I mean, this is important stuff. It can't just sit out in the rain, you know? Come on, guys. We have a covered front porch. It's right there. Like, you just have to walk, like, I don't know, 10 more steps. So, I don't know. I'll never understand that. But now, we've had pretty good luck. We've had pretty good luck these days with people actually um, putting the packages where they belong. So, I'm very thankful for that. Sindra, my denim yarn gets here on Thursday so I can start this jacket. Woo, woo, woo. Awesome. Uh, Ellen says you'll get it, Emma, just one step at a time. So true. Uh, Tracy said thanks, Ellen. Ellen, only have to weave in the ends on my second dobby. Of course you worked ahead. You're going to end up making four dobbies in the time that I finish one because these are taking so much longer. You guys see why my patterns call for 15 and 16 millimeter hooks? This is why. Because the Luna I finished in six videos, I think. This one's going to take like 10 to 12. I mean, it's going to have to because we got the front panel, the second front panel, and they take me forever. And then we got to do the hood and then we got to do the sleeves. So yeah, this is going to be a long one, but at least we get to hang out, you know, and if you're not crocheting with me, we still talk about interesting things sometimes. <laughs> so I'm glad that you guys are all here. Yeah, we don't have too many people today. We're at 13 people, but that's cool. If you guys want to hit the thumbs up, I truly appreciate it. 
Um, I, I feel like these playlists are super helpful. I'm still not where I can monetize YouTube. Um, but, uh, I, I did have pretty good luck with posting the video of me crocheting out on the front porch with the bird sounds. Um, we're going to put a wind chime out on my, on our front porch. And I'm going to try to do a few more of those videos just because, I mean, they did get a lot of views. People said they enjoyed the outdoor sounds. We have a lot of birds where we are. Um, and if the wind chime is out there, it'll just be nice ambience. You know, if you don't have that kind of sound at your house, sometimes it's nice to just have something like that playing. And I don't feel like there's a ton of those videos out there. Um, well, not for crocheting. I mean, you know, I think you can find like ambient neighborhood noise type stuff. Um, but it seemed to do well. And I think that's the kind of stuff people can play. And that would help with my, my watch hours. Um, and again, I haven't, I haven't been super worried about it because I don't know how much that would actually make me anyway, once I can monetize the YouTube channel. Um, I actually added the Google ads to my website. Um, so I had had a free blog for years that I could not monetize because you can't monetize the free blogs. And I finally was like, okay, let me, let me get a real website, you know, uh, that I can actually monetize and, um, just started monetizing my website maybe a month ago. It's maybe been a month. Um, I think I've made like $5. So, you know, it's something, it's something, you know, I mean, and it all adds up if, you know, especially now that this is what we're doing full time, every little bit helps. So, um, but it's just funny, you know, I waited so long to, to put that together and actually have something that I could monetize in that way. Uh, and it's just like, wah, wah. I definitely made more selling, reselling my old clothes on eBay. Um, but I don't do that anymore. eBay wanted all of my bank account information and I didn't want to give it to them. So I stopped selling on eBay. I still buy stuff on eBay. Um, I actually bought myself, so my birthday's this month uh, and I bought myself some new shorts for summer for my birthday off of eBay um, because I have this one pair of shorts by the North Face that's a cotton linen blend. So it's really, really good for summer and they're like a three inch inseam. So it's not, they're not super short, but they're also not excessively long. They're like a good happy medium. If I'm like working out in the yard and like bending over and stuff, it's not like showing everybody the world. Um, and they're comfortable. So I bought myself two of those. They don't make them anymore, I don't think. So I have to do like an eBay search and find the old ones in my size. And I found a hot pink pair. Oh, I'm so excited. It'll be perfect with these. I can wear my little hot pink shorts with my with my new dobby because it's got the hot pink in there because they're literally like this color they're awesome i'm so excited uh and i got one other pair so very excited about that that's gonna be that's gonna be fun okay what are we doing someone says oh ellen says a zipper would be cool um and i do think a zipper would be cool i just am on the fence of whether i want to really deal with that or not because I don't know an easy way to add it besides hand sewing it in and I also don't want the stitches to show through I mean this is such a busy fabric I don't really think the stitches would show through Terry thanks for telling us that again I meant to go follow the, you and talking about TikTok so Terry's gonna follow me on TikTok I appreciate it um I was a little nervous at first when I first posted I first started posting videos on TikTok they weren't doing so hot I mean my first video got zero views for like the entire first day that it was on TikTok. And um, it actually did pretty good on Instagram. So I was like, well, maybe I'll do good on TikTok. And, you know, I didn't have any followers at that point. I had zero followers, zero likes, zero views on my video. And I was like, I don't know if TikTok is right for me. <laughs> I was feeling a little lost and a little defeated at that point. So I was like, I couldn't even have one view, like not even one, you know. Um, and then I realized that I couldn't put a link in my bio unless I converted to a business account. But if you convert to a business account, then you don't have access to all of the good songs. Uh, and so I was doing a little research and someone said that you, once you get a thousand followers, you can put a link in your bio. And then you have access to like the creator tools, just like Instagram. 
So I was like, okay, I guess that's my goal is to reach a thousand followers. Um, and after the third, the second or third day, I started gaining some traction and um, I have been trying really hard to post at least once a day. So I'm trying to post one video a day, um, except on Sundays, <laughs> trying to take Sundays off if I can. Um, and that's how I feel about Instagram. I try to post every day on Instagram, which reminds me I need to do that today. Um, but I got over a thousand followers now. It's only been like five days. So it's awesome. I've, I've got my link in my bio now. Um, I, oh goodness, I don't need my computer to go to sleep because then I can't read your comments. There we go. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's where I'm at with TikTok. But I've got my link in there now and I'm just going to keep trucking and making these videos and hoping people like them. But I have heard there, it, it's a very different audience, you know, and I think that's why people say that it's important, um, you know, especially for someone like me who my audience is so varied, you know, the age and um, the, the people that follow me and purchase things from us and support us are, um, there's not like a, you know, people say you need a, a what is it called? Um, it's like a customer avatar. So it's like your ideal customer. I don't really have one because I mean, the age range and the kind of people that are part of this community are so varied, which is awesome. But then it's like, you do feel like you have to be everywhere because, you know, at all of them, like YouTube, I have a lot of people who are here on YouTube who just follow me here. There's people who only follow me on Instagram. There's people who are only a part of my Facebook group, you know, because that's where they like to be. Um, so sometimes it gets a little crazy trying to be everywhere. But I have found that there are certain things that I like to post in certain places. So for instance, with TikTok, um, it's, ju it's just different. You know, the, there, there are already things, there's two videos already that I have no, I have no plans to post them to Instagram. I feel like they just need to be on TikTok. It's very specific content that I created for TikTok. And the same thing with my Facebook group. There are things I share in my Facebook group that don't make it anywhere else, you know, because it's a very different group. It's a very different platform. And I feel like I can share things in a different way in my Facebook group. Um, so that has helped a lot when I realized, you know, I don't have to post the same thing everywhere. So if I post on Instagram, I don't have to post it to Facebook. I can post something else to Facebook. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, Instagram feels a little manicured. You know, I do focus heavily on my photography for Instagram, which it's not to be fake, I guess, because a lot of people, if you're focused so much on your photography, you're trying to make it look polished, but I love photography. So for me, it's a way of getting to spend that time in front of the camera and with my camera. And I love that part of it. But when I'm in my Facebook group, I like to just share like my bad mirror selfies, you know, like that's what I like to do there because I don't, I don't, it doesn't have to be super polished. You know, I can save that for Instagram. And then with TikTok, I feel like I can just be silly, you know, um, especially starting out so new with TikTok. I feel like I have, um, so many options and so many directions that I can go with the content that I put on TikTok. Uh, I've already asked a few people what they want to see from me on TikTok and, um, I can tell that it's a new audience because a lot of them want to see like the other, some of the apparel that I've made, which I don't share a lot on Instagram because I feel like I've already talked about it, you know, which that may be my fault. I probably should continue sharing about it because, you know, I'm, I have new followers, but, um, I know I'm missing some of you guys comments. I'm sorry. But they're not going so fast that I'm completely missing them. They're not disappearing. Ellen says she's had problems every time that they get a new UPS delivery person and any USPS packages, I have to go to the post office to get them. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, our USPS lady, the, the chick that picks up here is really, really sweet. She's very helpful. Um, you know, I so far I feel like I can trust her with leaving my packages in the mailbox for her to pick up. 
Um, but I did have an issue uh, last Saturday. No, not last Saturday. It was a Saturday in February that my packages got picked up from my mailbox. They never got scanned and they never moved. So I had an entire day's worth of orders that I just had to replace. I mean, it was awful. Um, I went to the post office and they took down my information. They were like, we're going to look into this because you're not the first customer that's come in um, asking about packages from that exact day. So, I, I mean, I hope that they figure it out because, you know, like that was, that was lost money. You know, I had to send out like a whole new pack of stitch markers, a bunch of stickers, um, you know, and thank God it wasn't hooks. Like that was... I was like, oh my gosh, if I had stuck a hook in there and I mean, cause we can't really replace our hooks, you know, I mean, it's very rare that we'll have enough to where if someone, if a hook got lost in the mail that we could replace it with that exact hook, you know, because we only make so many of each size and each color. Um, Emma said it took me two days to finish my Dobby and she added pockets. I hope you'll share that in the Facebook group. You're in there, right? I want to see it. I want to see it. Can you show me? Um, yeah, these are really quick makes, but again, doing it one hour at a time on live video, trying to talk to, it's definitely, definitely more difficult to keep the progress going. But let me know, even though this is slow, like I know this is a slower process for this, and I feel like this is a great way if you have a lot of other projects going on, you can take breaks on those projects and just work on this one for an hour and then set it down and come back to it. But I would love to know if you guys still like this format. Uh, if you want me to continue doing these, I had a lot of people when the Luna was over who were asking when the next one was going to be. So I took that as, you know, people are enjoying the process. They enjoy this live format. Um, so let me know if you still like it, because I know this is going to be a long one. This one's going to take me a while to finish live. Um, but again, the, the most important thing to me with these lives is to show that it can be done quick, pretty fairly quickly, even if you're only working on it an hour a day. And I want people to see that entire process. Um, so, you know, I hope you guys are still enjoying it. Nancy said, I loved the video with the birds. Okay, I'm glad you did, because I need to do more of those. And I sit outside and crochet. When it's summer, I sit outside on the porch and I crochet because I enjoy it. You know, maybe I'll, I'll probably have to spend some of that time designing. Uh, I've got quite a few cardigans that I'll need to work on, but I could literally do the design process uh, on video and just have the, the nature sounds in the background. But um, I love that. It makes me really happy to just sit out in the, the quiet uh, and crochet. So why not film it? <laughs> you know, um, there's that the old marketing adage, always be creating content. Um, I don't know who said it. I know I said it. I said it's the ABCs, the ABCs, because it's always be creating content. So it's two C's, ABC squared. <laughs> Uh, five dollars. Yes, Ellen, you're right. Five dollars is a skein of yarn in some places. I feel like all of my bulky yarn is like nine dollars a skein nowadays. It's gone up so much. It's ridiculous. I don't know how I would manage to price things at craft fairs now. I mean, I already felt like people thought my prices were high back when I could get like woolies thick and quick for five dollars a skein. Now it's like pushing ten especially if you get it off the Lion Brand website. I mean, I'm definitely not the type to buy yarn when it's not on sale. But, you know, if you look at like custom orders where you don't really have a choice, you'd have to buy it at whatever price it's at because they want that color, then it's even more expensive. I mean, that's double, double the cost. How close are you to watch hours here? Um, it's less than a thousand watch hours now. Um, I think, I think it's less than a thousand. It might be 1500, anywhere between a thousand and 1500 watch hours. So I, it's ticking, it's ticking by. Um, it's, it feels, it feels a little like a struggle. Um, but I'm just staying consistent. You know, I mean, that's all you can do. 
any kind of social media. You've just got to stay consistent. Uh, Ellen said the same thing that Emma, you need to post a picture in the Facebook group because we want to see your pockets. I want to see what color you use too. Somebody posted a picture of theirs and I can't remember who it was. It might have been you, Ellen. I mean, Emma. Um, that was like the gray sparkly yarn, maybe brown, but it had like a sparkle to it. Let me know if that was you and if that's the one with pockets. Okay, I have, oh, I've got 20 minutes left. I may make, I may make this front panel. That's my goal, if I can finish this front panel. I'm making progress. This color change is gonna be interesting too. I'm almost out of my first cake. So I've already used almost, how many yards are in this? I've almost used 300 yards of yarn already. Feels crazy. Oh, Terry says you have almost 1300 on TikTok. Yeah, it's been a little, like once I got the momentum, it's like the follows just kept coming, which is great. I mean, I think sometimes you need that little confidence boost, you know, especially like I said, I was on there and when I first posted my first video and it didn't get any views, any views, any views, it's like, man, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work for me. Um, but it, it does seem like it's going to be a fun platform. Uh, to share, you know, things a little differently than I do on Instagram. Um, I got my first Etsy sale from TikTok, so that was super cool. Uh, and I only knew because they actually put a note in uh, with the Etsy order. So you can have a, you can put a note in there to the seller. Uh, and they said that they saw me on TikTok and uh, bought one of my F off I'm crocheting mugs because I did a video on TikTok of my F off I'm crocheting um hoodie. So, and that's one of, that's one of the most viewed ones on there. And that's one like, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd put that on Instagram. I don't know. It feels like it's meant for TikTok. It was, I made that for TikTok. I felt like the audience on TikTok would enjoy that more, even more so than my audience on Instagram. So it's interesting. It's very interesting. And, you know, I may be overthinking it, but, um, I don't know. It's, an, it's going to be an interesting journey on TikTok. <laughs> and I feel like my Instagram, my following on Instagram has gotten pretty stagnant. So, um, you know, I feel like when I jumped from a couple thousand, like my journey to, I guess, 10,000 and then 20,000 on Instagram felt like it went pretty quick. Um, and I think a lot of that was COVID, people being home more, being on social media more. Um, that was the time that we really changed our business around and started really marketing to other crocheters. Um, you know, so that really spurred that growth. Uh, but now it's, it's, um, it takes a long time. You know, I've, the, just to get an additional thousand followers, um, I mean, it's months, it's months. Um, which not complaining, like I, I love my audience on Instagram has been paramount in helping me grow. And, um, you know, it gives me the option to work with brands because my following's big enough, you know, to reach out and, and work with larger brands. Like Hobie sent me the new yarn for, um, their new challenge. And I love, I love working with Hobie. They make it really easy. Um, they're really kind people, you know, um, but it just goes to show, it goes to show that no matter how much you grow, no matter how big your accounts get, you're always going to have that struggle with, well, am I, am I good enough? You know, like, is it, is it good enough? Is it interesting enough? Um, because you forget about the number and you're only focused on the growth. And so... I have to force myself to say, you know, it, it, the numbers don't matter. What matters is, am I spending the time that I need to, to connect with my audience and really connect with them? You know, I don't need new followers. I have the followers that I need to, um, have conversations with, share things with, have this community, you know, 
Um, so I feel, I feel like that's what's important, but it's hard. We get in our own heads. We, you know, I think all of us have confident, confidence issues somewhere in our life. You know, it may not be the same areas. Um, but you know, I just have to remind myself anytime I'm like, man, I just don't see how I haven't gotten from 25.9 to 26 by now. You know, I've been putting out great content people like it. But then it's like, come on, man, like you have 25,000 followers, you're fine, you know? Um, and it's just interesting because I used to feel like people, you know, when I had a couple thousand followers, I felt like, man, if I could just get to this many followers, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it, you know, but it's not true. It's not true. It doesn't matter how much you grow. If you have those issues where you question yourself and you have that doubt, it doesn't really, it doesn't just go away on its own. You know, you really have to practice. You have to practice being aware of the fact that it's happening. And then once you're aware of the fact that it's happening, you can make changes in the way that you talk to yourself and think about yourself and think about your business um, to create coping, coping mechanisms, you know, to help you push through that and not, you know, especially not negative self-talk. You know, I, I try really hard to make sure that I don't, in my head, say things bad about myself, if that makes sense, you know, um, cause that's not healthy. We have to be nice to ourselves. Ellen is going to take pictures and, or Emma is going to show, take pictures of her Dobby and share them. I cannot wait to see. Jedi Dragoon makes is watching and playing Stardew Valley. I don't know what Stardew Valley is. Is that like a computer game, phone game? Some other kind of game? Is it even a game? I'm guessing because you said playing. So. <laughs> um, Tracy says, love it. Yes, please. About the crochet alongs, the live crochet alongs. And same with Emma. Yes, please keep doing these crochet alongs. I love them. Ellen says the same thing. Terry says, yes, keep it up. Um, thank goodness. I'm really glad because I do enjoy these. I, I really do. Um, you know, we have a pretty strong group of people that join in on Tuesdays, uh, here on YouTube and on Instagram, you know, um, but I appreciate you guys. It's, it's been a really interesting journey with YouTube, you know, and it, it'll be going on a year soon, um, of me going live regularly. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I, I am really hoping I've got some great ideas for some tutorial videos. Um, one of them, I'm going to try to add felt to the bottom of my slippers. So I made these simple slippers. Ooh, I've got one here. So these are my little chunky, chunky house slippers. Um, and this pattern is live. This pattern's in my Etsy shop. Um, but I want to do tutorial on how to make these. So like a full on tutorial, I'm going to make, make one of these. I'm actually going to make, cause there, I only have one of this one. So I need to make the pair. <laughs> and that's why I haven't made it yet. Cause I want to make it on, on film. Um, and then I want to try to add felt to the bottom and it can be an adventure that I have in a video with you guys because I've never done that and I want to see if it works. So it can kind of be an experiment and I haven't decided if I'm going to try to, um, use hot glue, like a hot glue gun. And let me know if you guys have done that. I feel like some of you guys may have tried to add felt to the bottom of slippers um, let me know if you used hot glue, if you used fabric glue, if you sewed it on by hand, I feel like that would be difficult because you'd have to like work down into the shoe and, you know, trying to get your hand down in there to put it on the top. I feel like that would be really difficult. So I feel like I'm going to have to use some kind of glue, uh, but I haven't decided yet, but then we could do it together and I can kind of review it and, and see how it goes. So that's at least two videos. I definitely need to um, get planned out and, and try to get posted. And another thing, another thing to do. Oh, we are releasing new hooks this month. I know it's already halfway through the month. Um, I have the emails ready to go. I have the listings ready to go. I have everything photographed. Uh, the hooks are ready. Um, I'm just waiting on a day where I don't have a ton of stuff going on to release them because when I release them, I try really hard to get, if people purchase hooks the day of the release, 
Um, I try to get them out in the mail the next day, which means if I have a really busy day, I'm not gonna have time to do that. And so I haven't released them yet. Um, Emma says, I need a really nice chair set for my garden ready for, this yarn is splitting. Come on now. It's like when I don't look at it. I need a really nice chair set for my garden ready for sunny days so I can crochet and knit outside. Yes. So I have a big project that I'm working on outside. We had a dining room set that we brought from Georgia that will not fit in our house. So it's a really beautiful wood dining room set that's sitting out on our front porch. Now it's a covered front porch, um, but the elements are already getting to it. So I'm going to try to sand everything down, um, get the finish off of it and paint it, paint it with porch paint. So like outdoor porch paint. And I'm going to recover the chairs because they are like the squishy chairs. I'm going to recover them with outdoor fabric. And um, I cannot wait to share before and after. I don't know how well it's going to work. I don't know if they're going to last a really long time, but I'm going to try it. I am determined. And I'm going to paint them like crazy fun colors. Like the table's going to be turquoise and the chairs are going to be yellow and pink and orange, like all of my brand colors. So my brand is Pink Sheep is supposed to be like super bright colors. And actually right behind the, the camera, right behind my phone, I've got my um, tissue paper for all my packaging and it's purple, pink, orange, teal, and then I've got bright green. <laughs> so those kinds of colors are what I wanna do the chairs and then have the table be teal. Um, but I think that'll be awesome because you know, it will, it'll be great for photos. Like when I'm taking photos outside. So I, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun and we have to do something because we don't want that entire set to just get ruined being outside in the elements and not being protected. You know, like the chairs are, the cushions are starting to get moldy. Um, and the, um, finish is starting to like flake off you know, of the chairs. So I, I just really, and the finish was already screwed up on the table. So the dining room set actually came with our house. So like when we bought that house in Georgia, the dining room set was there and I hated it, <laughs> but dining room sets are expensive. So we kept it because we didn't have one, um, never replaced it in like seven years that we lived in that house. Um, I always said I would, but it's like $3,000 for a new, you know, $2,000, $3,000 for a new dining room set for a big one, you know, and then this, this was a six seater. Um, and, uh, so we kept it and it made it all the way to Alabama with us. So I figure, you know, might as well keep it and try to do something fun with it, you know, and have it have a fun story. Um, okay. So I have run out of yarn. This is the end of my first cake and oh my gosh. I may have made too many rows. Oh, oh, I think I'm finished. Okay, let's see. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. It may actually be exactly how many I need. It is. Okay, but I am out. I don't know if that will make it. I've got two more half double crochets. And I think I'm going to lose at yarn chicken. Yeah, I'm definitely going to lose. So what I may do, how much time do I have? I have a few minutes. So what I'm going to do, because I've only got this little, little strip of white. So let me grab a new cake. And let me see. Okay, so it starts with, I think all of these start with, this one might start with white. I wanted to find one that started with white and it looks like there's white in the middle of that pink. So I may be able to start this one and that way uh, I don't have, oh, this is going to be yarn barf. Oh, that's a bad one. Look at that. Oh, lovely. Okay. Not what I wanted. I'm going to stuff that back in there. But this is white, which is what I wanted. It's just more than I wanted. You know what? I think I'm going to cut this because I'm, I can't handle that right now. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this where it switches to pink so that I just have this big ball of white right here. And the pink is going to go back down in there. 
All right. <clears throat> and I'm just going to use the end of that white that I can find and attach it so that my last two stitches will also be white. All right. So I'm just going to tie this knot. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, nice pretty knot. I'm going to snip the ends. Okay. Now I can finish these last few stitches and I'll be finished with the front panel. Front panel complete. First front panel. So on my next live, we're going to attach new working yarn to the other side of the cardigan. There we go. So I finished my 32nd row and let me count one more time just to be sure. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 32. Yeah. And I should have 32. Yes. I should have 32 rows on the front panel. So I'm going to cut the end of this and pull that yarn through tying off the end of my front panel. Let me hold this up for you guys so you can see. So it creates like an L shape. So this is my bottom panel and then working off of the bottom panel, I have my front panel. So when you attach these, obviously, well, the back panel, so I'm gonna put it on opposite, but this would go the opposite direction, obviously, but it'll flip over the front. So when we start the other front panel, we're gonna attach our yarn here. So you're gonna leave your next space, attach your yarn here and work your first row towards the outer edge because it will mimic these. If you start out here and you work in, your pattern is gonna look different than on this side. It's not gonna match up exactly um, because you're working the opposite direction. Because if you remember, you ended your 32nd row, you ended your back panel on this side and you worked your front panel, the first row, this way. So if you want it to match, you'd have to work your first front panel this way. So we attach uh, right in here. Um, and I have the space. I actually make you count. If you look, uh, I'm on the second page of the print friendly, printer friendly cardigan. So for the second front panel, you're gonna join into, for me, However, it's however many rows. So my front panel was 15 rows, I mean stitches, 15 stitches across. I worked 15 stitches for each row. So if however many stitches you had, I had 15, I'm gonna join in the 15th stitch from the outside. So I'm gonna count from the edge, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's where I'm gonna attach just with like a slip knot. You'll chain one and you'll work yourself across. And you'll have 15 stitches in this panel too. So however many you had in this panel, and I, I repeated that a couple times earlier, I'll repeat it again in the next video so you know. Um, but you'll attach and you'll start working your second panel, and then that both front panels will flip over to the front like this, and we'll be ready to sew up the sides and leave the armhole. So. Um, that's great. I'm really glad I finished it. I was a little concerned. I didn't know if I would. And then I've got one of my nails. I had like a hangnail here and it kept catching on my yarn while I was trying to work with it. So that's no fun. Okay. Let's see. Emma said, did you mean my lab? I saw your labyrinth card again with the labyrinth buttons, but it wasn't that one. Someone actually posted progress on their dobby and it was like a gray brown kind of yarn that had some like sh shine to it but I can't remember who it was I'll have to go look um Jedi Dragoon says uh computer Nintendo Switch phone etc uh farming simulator okay yes and I actually haven't played any of those um I've played like the Candy Crush style games where like you shoot the gems and do all of that um, one of my favorites is the, the cat. There's like the one with the cat where he like gets the treats. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. Simon the cat. It's the Simon the cat game. I like that one. Uh, Ellen says, I'm thinking of using my cool glue gun to put little dots on the bottom of the slippers. That's an option too. Um, the problem is that the, like you said, Ellen, your husband wore the bottoms out. 
and I'm wearing my slippers so much that the bottoms are wearing out. I can tell. Um, so I feel like if I put felt there, maybe it'll keep the bottoms from wearing out. Because if I put the, the hot glue, I feel like it might still wear on the yarn. I don't know. But we'll have to do experiments. You try that. I'll try the felt. We'll compare our results. <laughs> I think that would be fun. Um, Brittany says, I saw a post in your stories yesterday about mes messaging you if we want one of those hooks. Are those different? Yes. So these are different. Um, the hooks that I posted in my stories yesterday were one-off unique hooks that we created to play around with color combinations. And two of those have already sold. We have one left and I'll show you guys in case you're interested. Uh, oh, let me wake the computer back up again. I don't miss your comments. Wake back up. Okay. All right, the only one left, and I'm doing these for 40. Our hooks are usually 45. These I'm doing for 40. This is a light blue base. So this is the base color. So it's like a lighter royal blue. It's a 16 millimeter. Um, and it's got a darker blue mica powder on the top. So it's got a lot of shimmer to it. Um, and you can see up here, let's see if I can see it in the sun. You can't really see it. But you can see where the mica powder, it doesn't really cover the edges, which it won't. Um, but that's what it looks like. So these are 40. You can let me know if you want this one. I put it on my um, Instagram, but this is the only one left. I have three of these that were like kind of one-off hooks. But if you've been wanting a 16, 16 is my go-to 15 and 16 for the majority of my patterns, um, especially the ones I released last year. Um this year they've been bigger like this year the winky jacket was a 20 millimeter this one was a 25 the mini puff is actually like an 11 millimeter um but my luna my tonks my trelawney um what else i think there's at least one more but all of those call for like a 15 or a 16 so um i will show you guys the new hooks that are going to be releasing. Where are they? Oh, they're up here. It's really hard to show you guys on here. I don't feel like it does it justice, but I will show you. These are going to be called our Cosmos collection, and we have two colors to choose from. This is the purple. So it's a black base. You can see the black base of the hook, and then it is a beautiful, deep, purpley blue mica powder. And it's called chameleon mica powder because if you look at it in the light or in certain um, in certain lighting, it does look kind of a different color. This one I think was like blue, green, purple, maybe. Uh, but that's the purple one. And this is the blue. That's the blue. And like I said, I feel like it doesn't really do it justice here on the camera phone um, because it is, they are so shiny. And this one you can really see, if you look at it straight on, it's blue, but out in the sunlight, the edges will look very purple. So super fun. But these are going to be releasing this week. I haven't decided on the date, um, but we'll have uh, a couple in every size because I know like we're out of 10 millimeter... 20 and 25 is what we're out of right now in the Etsy shop. So we'll have a few of each of those in this release. Um, and then we'll have another release next month. So every month we have, if you're new um, and you haven't been following us for a while, we release our 3D printed hooks once a month in a new color. And that new color, once it's gone, it's gone. Um, we have yet to repeat a color and we've been doing this now for a little over a year. Um, we may revisit old colors, especially if they were popular, but we haven't yet. So it's not like we never will. It's just, you never know when that color might come back. <laughs> so, um, if you like it, I would nab it. Um, let's see. I love the table idea. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, Nancy says that sounds pretty too. Uh, Emma, I don't call it yarn bar if I call it Steen's guts. That's true. Yeah. Same, same. Uh, Ellen loves the colors. Tracy says, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Ellen says, comparing results sounds good. 
Um, and yes, don't forget, click, forget to click the, the thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, I would love to, to have you along for the ride. Um, but this is it for now. Uh, I am going to be going live this Friday for part four of the Dobby. So we will be starting on the second front panel. Um, you can, yeah, find me on Instagram. The link is in the description, I think. If not, I'm just at I'm Pink Sheep Design on Instagram, same as YouTube. Um, and if you are not on Instagram, I always post my Instagram videos to YouTube as soon as they're done. So within the next, within an hour or so after I finish the Instagram video, I'll post it to YouTube so you can find it. I now have a playlist for the Dobby cardigan. So everything's easy to find. If you need to follow up and rewatch any of the videos, they are available. Um, and I think that's everything. So be on the lookout for our new hooks. They'll be here. Join the Facebook group if you haven't. And find me on TikTok if you're on TikTok. I would love to have you join in the little community over there. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for now. So I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. I will see you live on Friday um, over on Instagram. And until next time, happy hooking, guys.